Hello, everyone. Hi. We are back. It's Chris. It's Ed. We're at Old North State Wine, and we're down in the barrel room today tasting wine because we're thirsty. And not a minute too soon, I'm <laughs> Well, really, we're tasting wine so that you can virtually taste along with us. We do this every Thursday night in person at Old North State Winery, downtown Mount Airy. The downtown Mount Airy. Yes. And when you can't be here, you just simply pick up a, uh, a tasting packet with two bottles of wine and you can watch it from the leisure of your, well, maybe your car. Maybe your boat, park bench, yeah, wherever you want, wherever you can, wherever you can reach the YouTube uh, video, you can watch. You know, it's warm thing. enough today to drink on a park bench. Well, yeah, I, I mean, if you consider the fifties warm. Well, after uh, two months of the twenties, yes. Yeah, feels warm. Chef, you said it was going to snow again on well, Sunday. Well, that's what my phone says. I'll oh. believe it when I see it. But you know, it doesn't matter if it snows or not. Let's, it is sheer panic. Let's get you a different phone. Panic one that says where it's not going to snow. Where it's going to be 85 yeah, or a light breeze. Let's get that one. That'll help plan the day. Hey, happy February, everybody. I don't know. This is, a, this is our second one, February. It's our second one, yeah. This, this but you know what? We fun. didn't really do February justice on the last one. <laughs> we did. So it was time to, time to give it its due. Well, we are on the cusp, if cusp you will, it. of our massive weekend of Valentine's Day stuff. There's uh, the production started in earnest. The planning is is over and the, the work is beginning. Of course, we still have a little bit of planning to do, but ooh, well done. Nice. Cheers. So, nothing uh, like bubbles for Valentine's, right, Chef? And for uh, any random day. But yes, especially Valentine's, but I guess you and I are a little different. Hey, look, we're breathing. Let's have some bubbles. Yeah. There's always a reason yeah. to have bubbles. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, stuff the like that. The list is endless. Oh, this is a, uh, let me tell you about this little guy. This is uh, Kila Kava. It's a beautiful sparkling beverage, organic, Ooh, from nice. the Penedes region of of uh, Spain, so that's in the northeastern part, very, uh, it's, a, it's kind of a small region in terms of land mass, but massive in, in, in production, 12 or 14 million bottles, I believe. Uh, that is some yeah, serious it's, production. It's a big area for production. If you don't know Cava, well, shame on you. No, just <laughs> kidding. Uh, Cava is the... <coughs> Well, it is the champagne of Spain, if you will. It is a, it's a beverage that is a secondary fermentation in the bottle. So in other words, they make a wine. This happens to be a blend of uh, Maccabeo, Prea, and Shirella. Uh, these are the classic three the grapes names, yeah. that you will have in Cava. And uh, those three are individually fermented and then blended together in the bottle and then a dosage of yeast and sugar are put in the bottle to create the carbonation where the fermentation tra is trapped in the bottle so all the gases are in there and that's what makes these gorgeous tiny bubbles. Cheers. 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 You got to cheers bubbles. Mm. Nice biscuity nose. God. This is a this is one of the fruitier of of uh, kava's that uh, we've had recently. We do a lot of kavas at the chef's table. We're really into them. Chef does a lot of really kind of uh, salinity-based um, amuse-bouche. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, you know, like oysters and, and seafood and, and things that are really bright. And so we like a real, you know, we, we kind of prefer kava for those dishes. Uh, just love, when I think of uh, salty foods, I just, I just love Spanish whites, and I just think kava is perfect for that. This, however, is a little bit different style than what we've been serving at the chef's table. This is more of a kind of a party kava. You know, it kind of fall to me in the flavor profile. It might be a little bit reminiscent of Prosecco. It is Prosecco-ish. Mm -hmm. And of course, what I mean in terms of that is it's, it's a fruitier, mm -hmm. uh, it's still a very fine wine, don't get me wrong. And I'm, I'm not trying to say uh, Prosecco isn't fine, but Prosecco doesn't have the fine bubbles 
you know, their bubbles are a little bit grippier, more, more apparent as bubbles, where in Champagne and Cava, those bubbles are so fine, they really replicate almost a creamy texture, mm. not the bubbles them act, actually standing out as much. But it is fun, I do know that. It is fun, it makes me want to dance. <laughs> Opa, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, uh, this is, it is fun. How can you not be in a great mood? So if you're ever in a bad mood or you don't feel like dancing, get some bubbles. Get some bubbles, and, preferably some know, cava. Yeah, cava, you know, our, our Spanish friends, you know, Chef Chris and I, we, we had a little discussion about Spanish wines, how much we love them. They're like, well, gosh, we don't ever drink them. Well, I mean, we don't ever feature them. Well, I mean, we it's been we a drink minute. Them all it's, the time. it's been a while. We, we don't only drink them, there's none left to feature. Mm -hmm. So, so we're going to do two Spanish wines today, and this is the first. And I think this is absolutely delicious, uh, quaffable, and dangerous. Uh, this is a dangerous. It's a one. dangerous uh, selection. Yeah, and so this would be great, uh, just along uh, in terms of anything really. I mean, that you don't really need a pairing for this. It's, it's so versatile. It doesn't even need. I mean, food. yeah, and it, it, it could. You know, just enjoy that, but if your food happens to be out, all the yeah, better, all yeah. the better. Chef, uh, if you were, uh, you're thinking about tomorrow's uh, uh, package that people are going to be picking up, what do you think you might slide in well, there? Well, we're going to do a ceviche of hamachi mm. with this. I think it's going to just set it right off. Wow. We're going to have a little bit of pear and, and uh, oh, man. some herb. It's going to be great. Awesome, awesome, yeah, awesome. You're, 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 you're going to like this. Certainly, uh, I'm glad you said pear, Chef, because... Well, I wasn't going to until I tried it. Yeah. I mean, there is, you know, mm -hmm. it's... Yeah, I, I didn't get pear on the nose, but boy, I sure did. I get, like, pear skin, too. Well, and, and you know the texture of pear in your yeah. mouth? Yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, there's, it's, it's, pear, it's doing that. Pear uh, tends to be, in my opinion, just a little bit starchier than apples. Yes. And there is this kind of starchy element in this wine, which is absolutely beautiful. Chef Chris and I, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and speak for him, I just did. But we do love wines that are very texturally driven or, or that, that give you flavors that almost give you the assumption of texture, I guess. You oh, know, it they, does. They're, they're well, I don't want to call it a trick. Yeah. But it tricks your palate yeah. into thinking it's having something more substantial mm -hmm. than, you know, vapor. You know, right. and yeah. so, but, but man, this, is that good? It really is, and it, it's got a great long lingering mm -hmm. finish. Normally, uh, you know, something like this would dissipate fairly quickly, but this is uh, this has some staying power. So, I want to give you a, a little bit of uh, well, I'm just gonna I'll be honest with you. The first time I tasted this, it had already been open, and he told me, my, my distributor, that it had been open that morning, and it did not have this intensity of flavor that I had the first time. Now it was delicious and that's why I wanted to show it to you because I thought it was uh, you know a nice like I said uh, I don't know so if we kind of got almost into we'd locked into one style of kava here. And, well and we've this, been doing in, in your defense though I mean you know we just got through with Christmas and New mm -hmm. Year's and all these like really yeah. high-end tables and so you're doing these vintage kavas and yeah. we've had a lot of Kind of like special things going yeah. on so yeah you know i mean it's well this, yeah you know. so this is uh this is a departure from that but boy the fruit's even more intense when it's freshly opened i think this is going to be one for uh for the party it's also going to be one that would be <laughs> yeah you, you could do it for mimosa i hate to say that but, but it, would, it would work it can go free. either way but i gotta tell you it's just it just sits i mean i, I don't think you would blink at serving this the chef's table i mean if you put a you know the, the the right sturdy thing with it i mean even like a uh you know a heavy cheese or, or a creamy cheese with this or a, like a little fresh fried brined oyster i mean that would mm -hmm. it would work i mean it's not as luscious but it has the it has a lot of character wow and that's usually what you're what you're looking for it's delicious that is happy times right there so hopefully uh, everybody's out there enjoying that as much as Chris and I, and you didn't uh, knock your eyeball out. I probably should have done a little yeah. uh, more descriptive on how to open that, but just Next the, the main thing is, guys, once you take that protective cage off the cork, make sure you always have your thumb or your hand over that cork 
because you just never know, because it is a fermentation bottle, you never know exactly how much pressure's in that bottle. It's always a lot, I can tell you that, but it, sometimes it can be a little bit more, and that cork can come out, and trust me, you do not want to get hit by that. That's, uh, it could really no get joke. away from you. I yeah. think there's also some, uh, you know, it's really easy to uh, take it for granted to you open so many of these, you're like, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. And so you get kind of used to it never happening, right. but it only takes once. Yeah. Yep, I mean, your eyes are precious. You don't want to lose one. So, uh, we, we said we're going to stay in Spain two times today. This is what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to go with a Crianza level Tempranillo, uh, which, you know, gosh, how many of these have we had in our lifetime? Not so, enough. That's clear. That is clear. We're going we're gonna to make up for that start right now. And I appreciate you. Oh, let's, uh, let's rephrase that. How many of these have we not had? That's the thank real question. And Chef, I want to thank you for setting up our studio today. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I, I, took, a, I took a big uh, lion's share of the production value today. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> uh, if you don't know, our studio consists of us finding two seats and a table and a box and, and a box to set the uh, iPad on. So uh, our production value might not be great, but the content is uh, somewhat amusing. I'm exhausted from all this pre-production work. I need a drink. You do. So this is Celeste. It's a Crianza level Tempranillo, as I said. Uh, Ribera del Duero, which is uh, considered by many um, to have some of the best wines of Spain. Uh, you know, Rioja comes to mind when you think of the best, but not necessarily always the best. And certainly, uh, you know, there's Priorat, which uh, Chris and I adore too. But this would have to be uh, held in the in this area in the in the same high regard, in my opinion, of great winemaking uh, Spanish style. So that's what the Lord short for celestial. I see a bunch of yeah, stars. Yeah, they got all the little stars on there. Yep. Oh yeah, okay. Oh, that Beautiful nose, bottle. That nose lovely. Now this is uh, big. this is nice too because it's got a little bit of age on it. Uh, we got four years here, and uh, it still know, smells pretty uh, fresh. Yeah, yeah. And I can. There's some. I think there's some alcohol. In there. Yeah, I, I'm gonna have to agree with you here. There's no shortage of I the booze. I can smell it. This is gonna be mm. a, a Tempranillo known for uh, its ability to age as well. Just a little side note. So. You know, don't don't be afraid to you know get a case, enjoy six of them, and leave the other six behind for a bit, and come back and revisit. That's a great way to drink wine. Well, it's also your birthday next week. It's a great time to mm. put six away and give you six. Mm. That's delicious. It's a great idea. Holy moly! Now that is excellent, particularly for that level. Uh, you know, it is an elevated level, but it's not. Uh, like a reserve or grand reserve. So this is drinking much more above its head. I, would say. I thought it was going to be a little rough around mm -hmm. the edges. From the nose, the nose sure. made, is very brute, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but it's not. It's very smooth, mm. it's very silky smooth. I was expecting it to be a little more tannicky. Yeah. But it, it, it's, it's just really fruity and velvety. It's, got, it's just fabulous. This, this, is, this is so timely, Chef, because you know we talked about doing Spanish wines, and God, I love how they, they just, they they just they bring it. They bring the thunder, and they also, you know, they love to use American oak. And so yesterday, uh, I was out with Mr. Flippin. Uh, he has a, a, he had a red oak and a white oak that one fell over on the other one, and they both collapsed out into his hay field. He wants, you know, he wants to chop that up so he can plant his hay and mow his hay and whatnot. And uh, I, my mother uh, has one of those Hicks water stoves where you, where you burn wood to heat the house, that heats the water that heats the house. You know? And so she's always blowing through wood. And he said, hey, if you want some wood, I'll help you cut it and split it. I'm like, okay, great. But I didn't realize that this was like a 200-year-old white oak tree. This thing wow. was massive. And we were cutting and cutting and cutting on it. And it was a lot of work and we worked on it for three or four hours and we were done it didn't look like we had done anything the tree is so big you need a new blade i'm sure it's like back. yeah oak is incredibly hard to cut <coughs> um, and the drier it gets the harder mm -hmm. it gets and uh you know it's, it's it was it was a challenge but the great pleasure of it all 
And I must have looked like a, just like some kind of weirdo because every time we were throwing up the big, the big, big logs up onto the splitter and they would split and Charles would hand me the pieces and I was just sticking my nose yeah, yeah, yeah. every single time into that beautiful white oak. And every time it reminded me of Spanish wood age one. What a, what a I mean, great, it's just what, like, it's just time, all yeah. these flashes of, of you know, uh, big wines that are heavily oaked. Uh, it is really interesting to, to tie all that together. Boy, there's nothing like that. And uh, I, I appreciate the Spanish's uh, their their use of American oak that really you know highlights their wines. You know the the uh, the Italians do use some uh, American oak as well, and uh, I just think it's funny. You know, like how I mean I know I know there are some California wineries who use American oak, but that yeah you, know, you see so many of them using French oak. But I mean, isn't like, that funny? Like nobody yeah. uses their own wood. It seems like it, <laughs> except the French, of course, because yeah. they I are. Yeah, you know, they're gonna be like they might be telling you that. Yeah, I'd, yeah, that's true taste a lot of those wines. I mm. might, might want to call a fib on, on some of that. But, but what you're going to get here is uh, There's only so much oak out there. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, there's, there's all kinds of, uh, you know, because it's different like European it's, countries that are, you know, like Slovakian oak and Hungarian oak. Right, but which, which are not French oak. But, I mean, I'm yeah. just saying, I mean, yeah. they're eventually, yeah. the, the, with the vast amount mm. of they're, they're limousine oak barrels. Uh, that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. I mean, I yep. think there, there might be some supplementation yeah. going on that, mm -hmm. that we forgot to mention. Sure. So, uh, wow, this is so plush. It is so uh, sturdy, I would say. It, it, it really has strong shoulders. It's not a dainty wine whatsoever. Uh, but at the same time, this isn't a palate crusher. You can, you can still... Uh, I don't think you need a, a knife and a fork to get through this glass of wine. You want to hear my official description? Okay, here it comes. I mean, with all the nuance, everything. Right, let's go. I'm just having a great time drinking this. <laughs> it's the kind of wine, you, it's in your glass, and you're just happy it's in your glass. And you, you don't have to overthink it. You can. I mean, we could we can do the thing. Yeah. But I'm telling you, I'm just having a great time drinking this wine. I mean, it is just making me feel good. It's hitting... It's bringing joy All everywhere, yeah. and I'm just like, I just love drinking this wine. I would agree. And I wouldn't say that, even with wines that are like, quote unquote, better or more, you know. Sure. I don't have as much fun as I'm having just enjoying this glass this of wine. This checks all the boxes. This is the people. wine you just, you just, you just happy it's in your glass. Yeah, it checks all the boxes for me, and uh, it, it, like Chef said, it, it can be your after work slugging wine after it could be your with a fancy meal oh you could, it could this be, is saturday night wine and no yeah. problem but yeah. it's also it's also today this afternoon's wine and, and regardless of when it is or what it is just you're gonna be happy you're drinking it absolutely really really excited to have this one come across the uh the old glasses so to speak and uh gosh uh, it's 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 got so much fruit but it's, not, but it's not jammy. It's not No, and then normally black fruit like this is jammy. Yeah. You know, normally it's the red fruits that are brighter. But I'm getting black fruit, and yet it is not jammy. It is not you know, Syrah-ish at all. I mean, it is just... That sneaky acidity where It's my almost mouth, squinting. Yeah, yeah. My mouth is just watering under my tongue. And it's just flowing, and it's that flowing, but it's not. A, a, I mean, that's. Not, I wouldn't say it tastes like it is acidic, but it, it, it's my mouth's acidic. watering, so it clearly it's, has good acid. It's doing the the job of mm -hmm. of the acid. It's not acidic at all, right. and it's just is truly balanced. What a good time that is! Well, chef, now you have the the hard task no, of deciding no, what you're going to throw it hard. I, actually, we we've, we've got it. We had a special visitor. My friend Nick Hagen from Darcy Farms came to see us. So you know what I made today? I made some meatballs with nice. Cajun sausage and ground pork. Kind of like huh. a blend. Yeah. And I put the lusty monk mustard in there. Oh, and, uh, that mustard. You know that little bit of uh, pork you had left over yeah, yeah, yeah. that you gave to me? Yeah. And the nice. meatballs. So we got a mustardy, sausagey 
porky meatball. It's going to be delicious. Going to serve it with a little bit of that bear wallow cheese um, from uh, Looking Glass. Very nice. Ooh, that's a complex. Yeah, it's very com combination. well. A complex yeah. bun deserves a complex. You know what? Also, when it comes to uh, you know, when I think about uh, pork. Spain. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, I mean, right. All day, every day. All day. First thing. I mean, first thing. Yeah. I mean, who? Nobody does it better. Nobody. And I'm, you know, don't get me wrong. I, and the Italians, I love. I Italian. think are riding the Spanish it. coattails. Could be because they're just like people don't know. I mean, well, a lot of people do, but I mean, I would say yeah. the average person on the street, you go. Spanish is my European, favorite pork. European pork. They go, oh, all the Italians, but like, yeah, oh, it's the, yeah. The Spanish have that pork. I mean, sure, I mean prosciutto is lovely, but uh, you know, Emberico, Serrano. I mean, I, I would put Serrano up against prosciutto. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, I, it's even, on your mood. You know what? Also, I really love is that really that um, really brick hard chorizo with the paprika in it that they have the Spanish. Make. I mean, that's oh. where it is. Like it's stained. No, you can't so. cook with it. No, it's too, but yeah. you know this is tapas. Just for this just is for tapas. Yeah, I mean, you just slice it and eat it, but it has no equal. I was so upset the last time I went to Chicago. The tapas place that I wanted to go to was closed, and I was very upset because Did I you break to, in the windows? I was happened to be there like, on the, the, two, city. the two days that they weren't open. Damn it! Yeah, I'd have burned the place down. Well, I'm just gonna have to go up there on the day they're open. And eat all Mul their food multiple times, like I did last time. It's so cool. They put a stack of plates in the center because they, they, they know they know they know you're going to need. Oh plates. no no no! I'm only going to have a couple of things. <laughs> and Thirty minutes later, can we get some more plates? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, they know. And uh, a lot of pork and seafood, wonderful stuff. Uh, so now, and the Iberco, that's an actual. Is that a breed? I believe so. I think it's a breed of pig that like they won't share. Yeah. They're like, no, that's ours. Yeah. You know, like here, like we, you know, we'll, Berkshire and like, you know, all yeah. those things. Like, sure, yeah, come breed it. Yeah. They're like, no, this is our, this is our puppy. Mm -hmm. You know? Yep. The, uh, what is it? What is it? Is it a Hereford cow? Hereford. Hereford? Yeah. And the English started as so, an English cow. Well, we, we, well, we were, here. we were hauling the wood from Mr. Flippin's house to mom's house. Uh, the way to get into the back where mom's wood stove is, you got to go through a cow pasture and all those, uh, the neighbors has a bunch of those and they were, <laughs> they never stand in the road, the little dirt road up there, except for the, the day we got a truckload. And uh, yeah, my mom's a big animal lover. She takes pictures of them every day, the cows. So did you get out and slit one on the throat and well, say we're having steak tonight? Well, Charles like, oh, I'm a, I'll am just tap him in the car. I'm like, no, no. oh, God, no. Because my mom's there taking, like, she's going to melt down. But he's like, trust me, I'm a country boy. I grew up on a farm. So he, the cow, we're playing chicken, going head to head with that Hereford. And he just sits there chewing his cud as we're coming right up to it. And it does nothing. And sure enough, Charles gives a little tap. And it just nah, I was and, and took yeah, five well, steps to the left and kept eating. Said, Fine, you win. And then we pulled up, you know, past it and parked and got out. And he was just sitting there, or she, I can't, I don't know if it was a steer or whatever. Yeah, okay, looking back. Look, looked at me. That and horse. And gave me, no, gave me one more sheep. move. Yeah. And that was it. And it just kept eating. If it didn't have horns, it But was my mom sheep. was like, oh. Like, we're going to run over the cow. Like, the cow would just probably destroy Could the you truck. imagine? I mean, yeah, what, what a 2,000 know, pound animal would do to that truck. Uh, my dad hit one in Texas when I was a kid. He was going about 80 miles an hour. And I, He's that, lucky to live through that. He was very fortunate. Mm -hmm. Very mm. fortunate. Anywho, uh, that's my cow, cow slash white oak story. It's a good story. <laughs> It's actually a really good. Well, uh, everybody we got, knows a good cow story. We, we got so much going on. We got a chef's table on Friday night, Saturday night, Monday night. Chef, I just got off the phone, and uh, you know, as per going, yeah, we talked in detail about your menu, and um, I'm really excited because I got a uh, a 2017 vintage port for the dessert course. Wow. I'm so excited about that. My, That's uh, kind of a big deal. My my uh, my. My rep, Carrie, is so good to, uh, at finding those uh, little niche ones. He really that I'm looking is, for. Yeah, he's. Cheers to you out there for all you do. 
Um, oh, I actually drank a little bit. Mm -hmm. So really excited about that. And of course, we have a bunch of other winners, but that one just kind of like, you know, kind of jumped out at me. Um, so we, we've got three big nights of uh, lavish food and wine. Lavish. Sunday, we got decadence. Decadence. Decadence is Sunday. Sunday is the chocolate and wine. Chocolate overload. Five chocolates, five wines. Yikes! It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be too much. I got an awful lot of chocolate in today. Yeah, and, and I then, started making truffles today. I started yeah. making terrines. I mean, there's just chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. It's gonna be amazing. People are gonna lose their minds. It's these chocolates are amazing, and these, it's gonna be great. We're gonna have some. We're gonna have some of our wines that Tyler Feltz makes right here, and we have a couple international wines as well, and. Uh, well, it's going to be delicious and nutritious. And Super all delicious. Mm -hmm. And so it's a big week. And then, of course, next week we're reopening uh, for Tuesdays for lunch. So we're open Tuesday through Saturday for lunch, Thursday through Saturday for dinner. So, hey, we're, uh, we're moving forward. We're trying to break out of the winter rut. Yes. Changing our hours out of the winter hours is going to be one positive sign towards literally greener pastures. Literally. <laughs> Longer did, days, did you, greater fashion. Did you say the uh, daffodils started popping up? I like this in the yard. So it's, we're, we're almost there, folks. We're almost there. I mean, we will have a spot or two here and there. But the difference between, to me, you know, some of our biggest snows have been in March. Oh, yeah. Well, we're not getting away from But snow. what I love about it is they last 10 hours. Yeah, they're gone. You know, I mean, now, I mean, you know, because you get a huge snowstorm. And the next day it's 60. Mm -hmm. as opposed to three more weeks of 17. Right. And so even when we do get those little flashes of cold weather, it'll stick around. I, mean, I think that's where the, the change in the mentality comes. The, the longer days and the, uh, the, 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 the shorter duration of these mm -hmm. cold things. I mean, it just makes you feel like we're going to make it. We are. We are absolutely going to make it, kids. <clears throat> I hope they make some more of this wine. <sighs> yes. Well... Keep in mind too that this is perfectly aged at uh, you know 2018. That's that's a that's a sweet spot. Mm -hmm. You know, you get three four years under a quality one. It really does integrate and and uh, I guess it just is like that that orchestra mentality where you know all the instruments are perfectly in unison. And I think the components of wine really need a couple three four mm -hmm. years to kind of harmonize. Well, and especially to, uh, you know, to the confluence of them where it's highlighting all of it, you know, the acid, the fruit, the brightness, all that before one of the other elements starts to kind of take over. Sure. Where something yeah. becomes a little louder yeah, as yeah. it ages a little longer. I totally agree. That's a great assessment. Younger or old, older. There's, sure. There's too many there's things. Peaks, that are too, yeah. peaks mm -hmm. and valleys for each component for sure. Well, this one's uh, hitting on all notes. Two great winners from Spain. We hope that you've enjoyed this video, and if you're not doing these virtual tastings, you should be considering doing it. It's a great value to get two full bottles of wine, and, and then of course, Chef has the food pairings that you pick up, and we can arrange to have those you know, picked up any time of the day for mm -hmm. you. And then of course, uh, you know, if, you, if you really wanna do the big show here in person, we do four wines. And, uh, you know, it's a more of a social atmosphere. If you're looking for that, you want to make some friends, it's a great place to do it. And we have, just have a really interesting mix of people that don't know anything about wine. People know a lot about wine. And, uh, but, you know, it's just, it's just really cool. Really cool vibe. I mean, you get a little bit of everything. And, you know, some people, like, when they're leaving, they're saying, they had the time of their life. You say, well, what did you think of the wine? Or what wines? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You're just having a great time around people. It's good food, good company, good, yeah. great wines. You get all this knowledge. Or not. You just visit and have a good time. I mean, there's you, not a test. Yeah, you can take out of it what you like. Mm -hmm. You can get as nerdy as you want, because I'm there. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a nerd. And, or you can just be social and enjoy it, or, or just enjoy the great food that Chef sends down. Constantly getting comments on the quality of food. And we appreciate the feedback on all that stuff. Always. Mm -hmm. And uh, wow, what can I say? I also want to say a shout out to all you generous folks that have uh, been uh, been so kind as to sprinkling in some, uh, well, just some overwhelming quality of birthday presents over last week. I'm just... You have milked, you know, milked this for weeks. And, yeah. it's, and it should be your, at, at, at your age. At my age. I, it's I'm, a birthday month. <laughs> 
Well, it's turning out to be that. It That's what like, I'm saying. That's what it should be. You know, I mean, it absolutely should I be. I got that, that. It all started with that beautiful kitchen towel uh, that, that the Converse has awesome. sent yeah, me. And awesome. now uh, I guess everybody feels like they need to uh, get involved. And I'm, I'm not hating it at all. Uh, uh, Mr. Partin gave me a 14-year scotch from Oban that is absolutely to die for. I love their 18, but their 14 is fantastic. It's a, different, a, it's a character, different kind yeah, of fantastic. Yeah, a, lot of, a different kind, yeah. And, uh, you know, I dabble in scotch like many of you do out there, and I think, uh, well, it's just a, it's, it's nice to have kindred spirits, I'll say that. Well, so, Zinke went through a lot of effort. Those are not, yeah, not had, easy to find. He had to hunt that one. They're not easy to find. Uh, these days with distribution, it's if you're looking for something specific, it's hard they to They better find. already have it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, all you folks out there, next time I see you will be, uh, it'll be, it'll be, oh my gosh, it'll be, I'll be 51. You'll be yet, yet another year. I'll be 51 the next time we do this video. So let's, let's do this. Hey, 50. Yeah, just was, in case. Just in case. Just in case. 50 was great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And well, we've been playing with house money for a long time. Been a good that's run. true. And I hope this video finds everybody healthy, happy, all that good stuff. Wealthy, even. Take care. Thank you again, everybody. Happy Valentine's.